When an old fisherman noticed a bear in need sitting next to him, he immediately sprang into action. He was used to hunting, tracking, and killing, but this bear made him do something that he had never even considered. Near the remote town of Kalino in far western Russia, Foka Sergev lived a quiet life. Since his wife had died ten years earlier, he did everything himself, cooking, cleaning, and maintenance. In these parts of the world, there were no handymen to call in, and Foka's job went far beyond taking care of his household. Because his home was so isolated, he had to hunt for his own food too. The nearest shopping center was almost an hour away, so he would go there if he were desperate, but that was rarely ever more than once a month. So, to feed himself, that meant hunting with his rifle in the forest or taking his fishing equipment to the nearby river. There was no question about which one he preferred. In his working life, he had been a fisherman, working in almost any city that had a port. He missed it, the long adventures with his crewmates, managing the onboard 70-foot, 23-meter, fishing boats and riding into the high seas. It was chaotic and dangerous, but they were some of the best days of his life. Even in the off-season, the men would go on fishing trips together. It was great bonding, and Foka longed for those days. Now he didn't have any fishing buddies left, all he was left with were his memories. What connected him most was sitting by the river, fishing for food. Cleaning and gutting his prey was something he could do with his eyes closed, and he knew almost every species of fish by sight. Of course, his river fishing was a much smaller operation than he was used to, but it gave Foka something to do. Living near the forest all alone could be isolating. One balmy Thursday, Foka got more than he bargained for. His relaxed fishing time was interrupted by one of the deadliest animals on the planet, and it gave Foka a story to tell for years to come, even if nobody believed him. That day, he had already been out to collect firewood. When he finished stocking the branches, he looked up to the sky to see if the weather would make for a good fishing trip. The river was a 25-minute walk, and he didn't want to get caught in the rain. That thick dirt could quickly turn to mud and make the house almost inaccessible. There were some clouds in the distance, but Foka had a weather radar in his head, he could feel that the rain wouldn't come until evening. There was plenty of time to fish, so he put on his coat and boots and packed his fishing gear before heading out. Before he knew it, Foka could hear the sound of the water streaming by. That's how he knew he was close. When he arrived, he unpacked to settle in for the day. He unfolded his camping chair, put bait on the end of the hooks, and tossed the line into the river. Foka had even brought a cooler with a couple of drinks to pass the time. From experience, he knew that he might be waiting for a while. It wasn't a huge river, and there wasn't too much activity. That's why he needed to stay out for at least a few hours. He was hoping to catch some salmon or maybe a small trout, nothing massive, just big enough to make himself a nice dinner. But something came to him much quicker than he expected. The only thing was, it wasn't from the river. Relaxing into his chair, a gentle breeze blew over Foka's body. He could just feel the sunlight on his skin, and the sensation was so relaxing that he started drifting off to sleep. That's why he didn't notice something creeping up behind him. A shadow was moving up beside him, and when Foka began to flutter his eyes and wake up, the sunlight snuck in through the slits of his eyelids, and he stretched his muscles in his chair. It did seem a little dark to him, but he didn't think much of it at first. Foka was half asleep and assumed it was a shadow from a tree. Besides, he had other fish to fry, and literally something was tugging on his line, and he could see that it had some force behind it. This jolted him into action. He picked up his fishing rod and began to reel it in, but it kept sliding loose. Soon, he was on his feet, fighting to pull the fish in. This was very unusual, to have such a big catch in this river. Usually, they were small fish that you could fit in your hand. That's why he brought a small bucket with him. But this was a monster. Foka was eventually able to wrestle it to the surface of the water and hoisted it into the air with a swift movement. While it squirmed around on the line, 
he got his first real glimpse of its shape. Its body was long, smooth, and shiny, almost like an eel, and its mouth was gaping open, trying to find the water it was accustomed to. Foka recognized this fish, of course. It was a Siberian giant trout, sometimes known as a Siberian salmon. What was most impressive was its sheer size. It must have been more than 70 inches, 177 centimeters, by far the biggest fish he'd ever caught in this river. His first thought was how his drinking buddies at the nearest pub were going to react when he told them. He even considered taking it there to show them himself in case they didn't believe him. Foka had to use all his strength to pull it back to land, and it continued to barrel and roll. He tossed it into the bucket to his right, waiting next to him, ready to gut. Letting out a big sigh, Foka was about to prepare to put another piece of bait on the line, but he was so concerned with the fish that he hadn't noticed what was on the other side of him, to his left. With a deep breath, Foka leaned back into his chair. That's when he noticed it. He felt that something was sitting beside him, and to his horror, as he slowly turned his head, his instinct was proven right. Panting heavily, sitting just a few meters away from Foka, was a huge brown bear. Water was dripping off its fur as though it had just been swimming, and the grass underneath it had flattened under its weight. It was looking out towards the river, but as Foka noticed it, the animal turned its head to face him. The fisherman did have experience with bears, but never from this close. He was frozen in terror for what felt like an eternity, unsure of what to do. He looked the bear up and down, careful not to make any sudden movements, thinking that this animal could tear him apart within the space of a few minutes. But something was off. The bear looked sad, almost like it was crying, and it was staring at Foka with imploring eyes. That's when he spotted something sticking out of its foot. It was a giant thorn, and its other foot had scratches on it, suggesting that the bear had tried and failed to pick it out. It wasn't just tired, it was injured. The bear clearly noticed the man staring and looked down at its feet too, acknowledging its injury. It was in trouble and needed help. For some reason, Foka felt compassion for this bear. Maybe it was the way it sat next to him, almost like a fishing buddy, or the fact that it had been there for some time already without attacking him. So, he reached into his bag slowly and pulled out a gardener's glove he sometimes used. He slid his hand in and approached the bear, beginning to pull the thorn out. It winced in pain but remained pretty still. It only took a few moments, and once the thorn was out, the bear let out a big roar. Foka was thrilled that he could help, and he even tossed the giant fish he had just caught to it. The bear caught it in its mouth and backed off into the forest, where Foka spotted the silhouette of some cubs. She was a mother with babies in tow. Could it get any more magical than that? It's a story that Foka will never forget, but his friends still don't believe him, a 70-inch river fish and a bear sitting next to you. They suggested that maybe he never woke up from his nap. What a great story. Would you have dared approach the injured bear, and would you have gifted the giant fish to it? Looking from a distance, a bridge is crowded with people. It was nothing at first, but a bear also appeared here, hanging upside down outside the bridge holding the edge of the bridge with both hands. What happened? Why was the bear trapped on the bridge? The incident happened in California, the United States. Perhaps because of the good weather that day, the grizzly bear walked out of the wild and came to a nearby bridge. Usually, the grizzly bear rarely leaves its territory. Unexpectedly, this trip almost changed its life trajectory. Just as it was crossing the bridge, the grizzly suddenly saw two cars approaching from the opposite side. The grizzly panicked and didn't know how to avoid the cars for a while. The cars were getting closer and closer, and time was running short. Perhaps out of desperation, the grizzly looked at the guardrail of the bridge suddenly and jumped over it. Unexpectedly, this jump almost cost him his life. The grizzly grabbed the edge of the bridge's guardrail but was stuck in the fence, just like the grizzly is stuck here waiting for someone to find him. 
When a passing man stumbled upon a grizzly bear outside the bridge, he immediately called for help. However, the person in charge who rushed to the scene said that there was no way to rescue the place where the grizzly was stuck, and there were no tools available on the scene, so he had to think of a way. Until the next morning, the rescue team rushed to the scene of the accident again, fearing that the grizzly bear would not be able to hold on. Fortunately, it obediently maintained the posture of being stuck in the bridge and did not dare to move at all. What is unbelievable is that this grizzly bear has persisted for 24 hours, and it has never thought of giving up life, no matter how difficult it is. There were many people who participated in this bear rescue operation, and there were also many passers-by watching this rescue operation. There was a sea of people on the other side of the bridge. Under the watchful eyes of everyone, the rescue team started their rescue operation. Some rescuers cast nets under the bridge and made all follow-up preparations. In order to save the bear, some people hoisted the grizzly bear from the groove of the bridge. When the grizzly fell, the rescue team cast a huge net to help the grizzly, and the giant net caught the grizzly and brought it to safety. However, people can't get in touch with grizzly bears for the first time. It is a wild animal, so there is a certain degree of aggressiveness, especially when this kind of experience is life-threatening. The grizzly seemed to be frightened, motionless, and probably still in a daze. After confirming that the grizzly had no sense of attack, the rescuers sent it to the rescue center. Afterwards, the veterinarian found that the bear had no skin trauma but was frightened, and was fully qualified to be released into the wild. Humans and bears have always had an indissoluble bond. Some people will help grizzly bears in distress, which is understandable, but some people choose to be the closest friends with bears, and everyone is surprised when they hear it. This incident happened in Russia. I have to say that the fighting nation is crazy, and even the pets they raise are different from others. This woman from Russia eats and lives with the big brown bear. They have a very good relationship. They often go out and play together and even sleep together. One person and one bear are like old friends. The woman's name is Veronica Ditchka. She is an animal lover. In 2019, she rescued a huge brown bear in a closed wildlife park and named it Archie. For a while, she took her best friend Archie to go fishing, and even let him try to row a boat. Veronica has always emphasized that this big brown bear is very safe by her side, so there is no need to worry. The brave Russian woman said that she did not ask for trouble when she took the huge brown bear to paddle a boat to fish, and they were already very good friends. Veronica once posted a video of her going fishing with a big brown bear on social platforms. Veronica spent the whole afternoon on a lake in Novosibirsk, Russia, looking for food for this big guy who looked a little scared to outsiders for dinner. The big brown bear Archie looks very happy and enjoying himself. I saw Veronica fishing leisurely in the lake in a small boat, holding a fishing rod in her hand, waiting for the fish to be hooked, accompanied by a brown bear, which resisted the urge to jump into the water to hunt for itself. For this reason, it even imitates Veronica to hold the fishing rod together and learn the correct posture for fishing. Veronica sometimes hugs the big furry friend next to her. One person and one bear accompany each other like old friends. The big guy even rode the boat for the owner when she was tired. The picture looks very sweet and incredible. Their rescue two years ago has made them so inseparable that Veronica has no doubts that the potentially deadly animal will never betray her. To prove it, they often take to the water and go fishing, both having a great time. Veronica said that she and Archie are very close friends and cherish each other's company, and she is not worried about any problems in their relationship. She felt that Archie was a trustworthy part of her family. They ate and lived together, and Archie slept in her arms when he was scared and hid behind Veronica when he was shy. Veronica also posted some photos to show how close she and her little friend Archie are, and she has repeatedly stated that Archie will not attack and hurt humans, which is a magical feeling. Because Archie was kept in captivity before he was rescued, he was raised artificially since he was a child, and he had no ability to make a living on his own, so they felt that he could not be released into the wild, so Veronica had to take him with her, 
and Archie also regards her as someone close. Archie spends every day with the family and has fallen madly in love with playing in the water. He really likes to go to new places, so every photo shoot is a joy for Archie, he is very excited. In this regard, netizens have two types of comments. The first one is that it is no big deal, and that bears are much friendlier than humans. Bears have never invented anything that is specifically harmful to humans, and humans may be dominant in this respect. The other is that this is very dangerous. It was only a matter of time before the bear would go back to being an animal and attack her. Many tragic endings tell us that even if humans raise wild animals from cubs to the size they are now, the danger cannot be eliminated. If you look at the large carnivores that are kept as pets, you will find that 99% of the people who keep them eventually die may have something to do with it. Similar things happen many times. For the vast majority of wild animals, our living room is a very noisy environment, and they, who like to be quiet, will feel anxious for a long time in this environment. Animals can become moody and can become brutal in a matter of seconds, which can be fatal. In addition, wild animals cannot adapt to life in human cities. Being a pet will greatly damage their health, not to mention legal issues. Wild animals are not suitable for living in our homes, which is not only very bad for their health, but it can also greatly interfere with our daily lives. Some of their habits will also affect our lives more or less. Therefore, wild animals may only be watched from a distance and not played with, for their own good and also for the good of human beings. If you really think a critter is in trouble, call your local wildlife center for advice, but don't bring them home, it probably won't do them or your family any good. Plus, what they need may not be a bottle full of organic skim milk or a more comfortable nest, but the wider nature. 